Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is part two of my watering routine. If you have not checked out part one, I will link it at the end screen. So let's just get right into it. All right, let's move on to watering the plants in the bedroom. I'll just put my fan aside so you can actually see the plants behind me a little bit better. All right, so I've got a bunch of moss pulps behind me and um, I usually water them thoroughly once a week. So once a week I do the bottle upside down thing and then usually halfway through the week on a Wednesday or a Thursday I might just have to water the tops of the moss pulp. So they were last watered around Wednesday. It's Saturday today so they aren't dry dry. Right? I mean if I, oh you can hear that. Obviously the tops have dried out quite a bit but the part of the plant where the, the part of the pole where the plant is on like I suppose you can't hear anything, that's because it's not crunchy. So I'm not worried about the top, this one is still fine. It's a little crunchy. So they're probably not in need for a desperate watering. I could definitely get away with a couple more days without watering them, but I wanna make my life a little bit easier as well. If I let them fully dry out, it's much harder to rehydrate them and it's gonna take more water as well. It's gonna take a little while longer to soak through. So if I water them right now, before they actually fully dry, the moss can just really absorb the water quite nicely. So I'll just go ahead and flip a few bottles upside down. Right, I also have a couple of smaller moss poles. I've got the Majestic over here and I've got the Soderoi over here. So they're only half as tall, so they're not gonna take a full bottle of water. And so I'll just pour it over there. And I suppose you can't really see that. But the good thing is that because I'm watering them before the moss pole fully dries out, the moss isn't hydrophobic. So I can just pour water all over them without actually worrying about making a mess. I could also just totally just, you know, fill the bottle with just half a liter instead of a full liter and then pop it upside down. Alrighty, I have Brett supervising the watering and I'll be back really soon. Alrighty, so it looks like most of them are done. There's one still going over here, that is fine. Usually it, it, it takes somewhere between five to 30 minutes usually. Really depends on just how dry the moss is. Dry moss has a much harder time absorbing water. Also just depends on how I flip the bottle on there. Sometimes you get unlucky and a little bit of moss is kind of blocking it and suddenly it's not so fast. I could definitely wiggle it around a little bit and see if I can somehow speed it up, but I'm not, I'm not in a rush, right? I mean, I just got a whole lot of home, uh, I just got a whole lot of housework done. I vacuumed the whole apartment while the, the pulse really kind of watered themselves. So I really love watering moss pulse. I find it so much easier to water moss pulse compared to my, my regular non-moss pulse plants. I think this is just such an easy way of going about things. All right, so let me refill these. Alrighty, so just before we move on to the plants at the bottom over here, um, so with these moss pulps, I mean, they are, some of these are really, really large, so I'm having a hard time moving them around. So I'll try and just keep them in their spot where possible. That also just eliminates any sort of damage I can cause by moving them around. That's usually where I rip most of the leaves or, you know, snap a petiole or something like that. So if they just stay here, they're pretty safe. But of course, over time, dust and cat hair um, you know, accumulates on the leaves, which really impacts the ability for the plant to photosynthesize as well. So you do want to have clean leaves. Clean leaves are also a pest preventative. And of course, if you just spray your leaves, like pests will be washed away. You won't eradicate the pests, but you'll stop them from sucking on your leaves. So when I had smaller plants, when they were all on just 90 centimeter poles, actually every week, we, weekend, every Saturday, I would take them to the bathtub. I would spray them thoroughly, the leaves and the moss pole, and then put them back. Um, I, my plants have just gotten way too big. I can't even fit them all in the bathtub. Um, I would literally have to do it in like three, four, five tranches. So, 
So weekly, I water them in the way that I just showed you, but I usually take one or two of these plants also into the bathtub, not necessarily on the same day I water them, at any day really, uh, and just spray them. Or just whenever I notice that a leaf is getting looking a little dusty, if I feel like um, I can see some signs of pests and so on, then I'll just take them to the bathtub. I just do it one at a time. I don't really have like a schedule. I just really wing it based on what the plants look like um, but if they if you have smaller plants i i think it's a great way to to go about things because clean leaves um are just make for healthy plants um i hope i got the framing right i'm struggling a little bit to water and film at the same time because my apartment is actually quite tiny so it's it's kind of hard to go it's, it's kind of hard to go far back enough for you to see me um but We'll try. Okay, so one other thing I forgot to mention about the moss poles. Now, I just used one liter. Some of them might need a little bit more than one liter. Some of them might have needed a little bit less. So in about an hour's time or so, we'll come back and we'll just uh, have a look at the pots to see um, if any water has drained all the way through. And we'll also feel the bottom of the moss poles to see if enough water has drained through the moss pole to actually moisten the whole thing. So we'll be back uh, soon. But in the meantime, I want to take care of my non-moss pole plants. So with my non-moss pole plants in here, I pretty much just water them once a week as well. But as always, it's good to apply a little bit of common sense and see, do they actually need water or not? It really depends on the week, the season and so on. We've had a pretty, um, we've had a pretty wet week, pretty, pretty rainy, lots of humidity. So I feel like maybe, maybe not all of them will require some watering, but um, same thing here, sometimes I take them to the bathtub and I just give them a good spray and a watering in there. Um, but I've done all of that with them uh, last week. So today I'm just going to water in here to make it nice and easy and I've got my trusted bucket uh, to catch any excess. Alrighty, so let's start with my banana over here maybe. So the banana is usually pretty thirsty because it has quite nice large leaves. So, um, and it's in a small pot, so I'm just going to go ahead and water that quite thoroughly. It's good. Um, it's easy because of the see-through pots. I can really tell by looking at it, but obviously also feeling it. Like you can feel by the weight um, if it needs watering or not. All right, first one done. Now with my crawlers over here, um, it's pretty easy because I can take that pot out so any excess water is just gonna be ca uh, caught by this cash pot anyway so it's really easy to water it in here without causing any sort of uh, damage or without uh, you know without worrying about the excess water it's going to be caught by that cash pot but as you saw that was still sufficiently moist um, and so is the pasta right next to it so i usually water those every fortnight so every two weeks so they don't need any water at the moment but maybe in summer when it gets a little bit warmer um, and when it's not quite as humid then maybe i need to switch that to a more weekly frequency righty moving on to my anthuriums in the back this one i just recently repotted um, and the medium still seems to be pretty moist so yep don't need to water this one today What else do I have? Yep, I've got this one over here. It's pushing out a new leaf. Whenever you've got a plant that's pushing out a new leaf, of course, it needs a little bit of extra water for that new leaf. It needs to inflate. So I find that any plants that are currently growing, especially growing any new leaves, they usually um, are a little thirstier. Um, it's, the watering is not just based on the pot size or based on... Um, the species is also just based on the specimen itself, how large it is, how much of a root system does it have, how many leaves does it need to feed. Alrighty, let's have a look at this one. This one I also repotted just recently and you can see that there's all of this water condensation still showing in the pot. So these are these little air pockets that I really love about the aeroid mix. These air pockets really allow for this humid air to accumulate in here. And that's really what's going to make these roots thrive. So I repotted this just uh, maybe 10 days ago and you can already see some small healthy roots starting to push uh, towards the outside of the pot. So no watering for this one. Um, 
maybe halfway through the week, I'm going to go ahead and give the top layer of moss a little spray. The top layer of moss really just encourages new roots to come from the stem and they grow into the pot. But the potting medium in itself doesn't need any watering today. Another unthrewing, you can see that it has a lot of roots over here, but I can already tell when I picked it up that this doesn't need watering. It's plenty, uh, it's plenty, it got, it's still got plenty of moisture left. The pot feels heavy, so no need to water this one either. We've got a little elbow over here, definitely uh, happy. Now, what I like about this, the pot is a little bit, um, the pot kind of fits that planter perfectly. So if I water this, any water is just gonna drain through and accumulate in that planter, but I don't need to worry about the potting mix or the potting, the nursery pot in itself actually sitting in water. So very low risk of overwatering. So I love it when I find like a pot and planter combination that fits perfectly. And then I've got this little one. Again, I can just tell by picking it up that this does need watering. I don't even need to look at it. All right. Well, that was pretty quick today. Not much to water in the, bar, uh, in the bedroom, but we'll be back really soon and we'll check on the moss poles and see if I need to pour a little bit more water uh, in there. All right. So it's been about an hour, maybe an hour and a half since I popped the bottles upside down. So that's plenty of time for the water to drain through the moss pole and any excess water to accumulate in the planter. So I'm going to check for two things. I'm going to check for any excess water that ha is in the planter and I'm going to empty it out. But I'm also going to check the bottom of the pole to make sure that there was even enough water to drain all the way into the pole. Um, especially if a plant has quite large leaves like that, they need a lot of water. So it's more likely that the glorious is probably needs a little more than one liter of water, whereas the um, mangela over here probably didn't need the full liter of water. But we'll find out. Okay. So I can just lift up the plant and I can see that there's no water that has drained all the way through so that's all good I can pop it back in but if I squeeze the bottom of the pole over here you can I mean I can feel it but you can hear that there's nothing no crunch means that this pole is perfectly moist I don't need to do anything else all right let's have a look at the glorious you can hear so you heard a little bit of crunch there right nothing that actually makes me want to water it again but most likely when I give them a top up uh, halfway through the week, the Glorious is going to need more of a top up, whereas the Mangela probably doesn't need a top up at all. Just because, I mean, the leaves require so much more water to stay alive. Um, yeah, and now I'll just go ahead and I'll just do that for all of the poles. Alrighty, so this is my Splendid and I'll, I'll hold the microphone close by. I hope you can make... I hope, I hope you were able to hear that. There was definitely still a bit of a crunch on the bottom of the pole. So I'm just going to give this a little bit more water. Because the top part of the moss pole is already moist, the moss is going to absorb water really, really quickly and it can absorb a lot of water really quickly. So at the beginning or when I, when I showed you the first watering, I put the bottle upside down and slowly let it drain through. It's because the top of the pole was dry so the moss was really hydrophobic but now that it's no longer hydrophobic I can literally just take the water and I can just pour it down that pole and there's not going to be anything be spilled it's a pretty clean process all right so I gave it another half a liter or so that should be enough Alrighty, that was actually the only pole that needed any sort of additional help. There was no excess water draining into any of the planters. All of the other poles seemed to be sufficiently moist as well. I suppose it was a really rainy and humid week here in Sydney again. So the poles didn't need that much water. So one liter is plenty. And of course, I've been doing this hundreds of times over the years. By now, I kind of know how much water each of my moss pole can take. That gives it the perfect level of moist, but not too much water or excess water draining through, or but still having enough water to moisten all of the pole. So it's pretty much one liter, but keep in mind the amount of water that your pole can take is really based on the amount of moss you've got in there, potentially the type of moss or the quality of moss that you've got in there as well and of course the size of the pole the size of the plant and the conditions that the pole is in in a couple of days time the tops will dry out first so in a couple of days time i'll need to come back in here and do a little top up i'll take you along as well anyway 
enough talk, let's go back into the living area. Anyway, all right, that was kind of my average Saturday. So I think that took me about three-ish hours. Definitely took me a little longer because I took you guys along. When I do this by myself, I usually put on some good music and I really have a good time. I love doing these sort of things. I don't consider them plant chores. I consider this my hobby. I like growing plants and plant maintenance, watering, plant care is the biggest part of it, right? All right, now I wanted to give you a true indication of you know, what my watering routine actually looks like. So we can't just look at one day at a time. So this is just really what I do on Saturday. And Saturday is really the bulk of all of my plant care. But what I'm going to try is I'm going to try and film any other things I do during the week where I just do a little watering top up, where I water here or there. I try to um, think about filming all of it and, and bring you along. But really what I do, I usually wake up in the morning, I make myself a coffee, I walk around the apartment, I look at all of my plants, mainly to look at them because they're nice. But while I look at them, I obviously make sure, does any of them need water? Does any of them need pest treatment and so on? So I do that every morning as a little ritual anyway. And then um, sometimes at night, the same, right? Or like, you know, you walk around the apartment, you see a plant and then um, I, I take care of it here and there, right? So I don't necessarily wait until Saturday. If I notice something needs my urgent care, then I do it then and there. So I'll try and take you along throughout the next week to give you as much of a true insight into how much effort and time is actually involved in um, watering all of my plants. Um, so yeah, I'll see you soon. Alrighty, it's Wednesday now. I just finished work, so I've got a little bit of time to have a look at my plants, give any plants a little top up if required. Also, as always, of course, the weather forecast was completely wrong. It's actually really summery here at the moment. It was a beautiful, warm, hot day today. It's really dry outside. I had all my windows open. It was really beautiful, but definitely not what I expected when I did my watering on Saturday. So I was a little bit conservative on Saturday because I assumed it's going to be a really wet, rainy, dark week. But instead, we are blessed with a whole lot of sunlight and dry, warm air. So I need to do a little bit more watering today than I actually anticipated. But, you know, that's life. You can't necessarily anticipate exactly how much watering you need to do and when you need to do it. That's why sticking to a really scheduled frequency is absolutely useless. You do need to adjust and assess your plants all the time. But I'm trying to be strategic about it. So really my goal today is just water the plants so that they can get through till Saturday. So let's go. I'm mainly worried about my moss pots, or not worried, but I'm mainly going to focus on my moss pots today because I know that on Saturday I didn't water a whole lot of moss pots, at least in the living area. I watered all of them in my bedroom. Hey, Brad. Come on. But when I checked my moss pots on Saturday, some, most of them were still fairly moist, so I didn't really need to water any of them. So I feel like I'm going to spend most time on the moss pots in my living area today. So I'm just going to use my trusted bottles and my squeezy technique. So let's have a look if this one needs water. Oh, this is like super crunchy. Like this is like crunch level 10 out of 10. So this is not just the surface being crunchy. This is actually the whole moss pot being crunchy. As I move down the pole, ooh, as I move down the pole, it should technically get less crunchy, but it didn't. So this pole is pretty dry and I should really pop some water on here ASAP. So I should have probably done that yesterday, not today, but I had a busy week. You know, it is what it is. Have a look at this one. There's definitely a little bit more of a crunch that I can feel here compared to Saturday. This moss pot doesn't dry out quite as quickly because it has, first of all, a lot of moss in there and it has a reduced surface area due to the plastic. Actually, let's try and turn it around and we'll see what it looks like from this side. I, th I think I haven't turned it around since I potted it up, actually. So this will be us exploring together. Easier said than done. Instantly regretting me doing that. Um, so technically on the outside, I kind of retrofitted that plastic on. That's why it's looking a little bit messy. But I would be expecting to see a little bit of water condensation uh, on that plastic. I can't see much. That's why I'm thinking I can definitely water this easily. But what I want to do show you, if you want to come a little bit closer, basically this plastic is taking any of these really thick, nice roots and it's going to channel it back into the pot where it can really expand and build a large root system. So. 
That's why I decided to go with this plastic backing for my Dubia because I don't think it's going to mature any further unless I give it more room. So I do need to water this. And I'm just going to try pouring it all over there and leaning it backwards. So I'm going to use that plastic to my advantage. Obviously, if that wouldn't have the plastic backing, then that water would by now go everywhere. But I'm just going to do that. The pole isn't even at that top half. The plant hasn't even really attached to the top half of that pole anyway. So I just want to water this with the goal of enough water dripping from the top all the way to the bottom and yeah that's doing its thing alrighty I might need a little bit more this has a lot of moss all right that was about a liter and a half so why don't we just leave it at that and we come back in a couple of minutes and see if the moss has nicely soaked it up. Another one, and I was actually naughty, I did water this on Sunday because I realized that on Saturday when I was filming the video, I actually stopped watering this. This is the plant where I can't fit the bottle on top because it's too tall. So I'm just gonna slowly pour a little bit of water on there until the moss is moist enough to absorb more. So really slow at the beginning, but then once the moss reached a certain level of moisture, and you can tell by the sound it's, it should be moist, at least on the inside, then it can absorb a lot of water quite fast. I could also just move it down from the little table, but I feel like that would be too practical. I want to make it as hard as possible on myself today. And I love the stretch. Okay, I think it's plenty. These are all the hard ones out of the way. The oxalis, I do water every couple of days. I just go in here and do this. That's it. So I did that also off camera. Sorry, I, I, I said I'm going to take you along everything, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, you know, I, <laughs> sometimes it's a lot of, you know, I was like when I notice a plant needs water, I just want to get it done straight away, not necessarily do the setup, get the mic, get the tripod, get everything, because then I'll just won't do it. So I do what's in the best interest for the plant. All right, let's move around the rest of the apartment and check out any other moss poles. All right, this is not giving me any crunch. It's hard to actually even uh, access the moss pole because it has so many plants on it. The less exposed your moss pole is, the less quickly it will dry out as well. So this moss pole is covered by a lot of leaves, so it won't get any direct sunlight exposure. So it actually stays moist for longer compared to these moss poles that are still completely empty. But at the same time, of course, it has a lot of leaves that it needs to actually support with water. So it probably turns out to be the same in the end. But just thought I'll let you know that that's an observation I made. This one I actually fully forgot to water on Saturday. I only just noticed and you can really hear that crunch. Like that's not good. So over here, um, hang on, this is maybe a little bit too much water for just a small moss pile. So I'm just, I gave a little more to my axalis <laughs> and I'll just pop this on here. And this should now release slowly enough so that even though the moss pole is super, super dry, it can really slowly re-moisten. And then as it gets moist, it should be able to um, access water quicker after that. So this could take a little while, but it's okay. We're not in a rush today. Next one, again, very, very crunchy. I hope you can hear that. Technically, I'm not really worried how crunchy this top part is. Nothing has attached to it yet, or at least there is no root system within that top part of the moss pole yet. So really, I should be squeezing the bottom, which is as bad. <laughs> so this is still going to get one. I mean, how the hell am I going to water just the bottom part of the moss pole? Like technically, that's the part of the moss pole that I need to water, but it's just so much easier just to do that and then let the top pole water the bottom pole. Also, as I showed you with my biliatii on Saturday, 
sometimes roots could be growing up a moss pole. So keep in mind, you want to water the part of your moss pole that contains the root system. So just because your node hasn't reached a certain level within a moss pole doesn't mean that your moss pole doesn't contain roots. All right, next one. Gives me like a very faint crunch, nothing too crazy. I reckon I could just pop a half bottle on here or I could just pour a little bit of water on it. And this one is in the darkest corner. It gets the least light. So, and it's a little bit thicker. So this is perfectly fine. No need to water. Let's have a look at this moss pot. Really, really, really crunchy at the top, but I don't care. No crunch at the bottom. So this is fine and can wait till Saturday. Very, very crunchy. Oh, very crunchy. Very crunchy plus three plants on here. So, I mean, crunchy, a crunch that indicates that the surface is wet. The inside is definitely still moist. Even when I put my finger in at the top, I still felt moisture. But I know that there's three plants on there. Three plants are obviously going to drink more than just one plant. So I don't think I can really go wrong with this plant, especially if we consider that it's in one of these nice pot and planter combinations where any excess water is just going to drip into the planter anyway. So the pot is never going to sit in water. I'll just chuck a full bottle on here. Um, my Ataba Poenzi is also one of the ones that grows roots up into the pole. So I do want to top this up a little bit. And see, because, the, because I didn't wait for the pole to fully dry out, I can actually just pour this in here without creating a whole lot of mess. If I waited another couple of days, I would have a harder time making uh, re-moistening it. Moving on, the... Oh, very crunchy, wow. I mean, this plant is also right next to my window. So when I open the window, this is getting the most draft and draft is just gonna make things dry out. You want airflow, not necessarily draft. Uh, and you can see, um, because the, dry, the moss is super dry at the top, it is actually a little bit messy. Not messy enough to actually make a mess on the floor. It's just going to drip into the pot, right? But that's why I never watered the pot in itself. That sort of either excess water dripping out on the side or the excess water actually draining all the way through the moss pot is going to take care of the moisture level of my potting medium. Uh, and then you, you'll notice that as it starts soaking up, that messiness is getting less and less. But ideally, I would have not let it dry out that much, and then I would have had less mess. So if you're worried about mess, water more frequently, but smaller amounts. If you're not worried about mess, do whatever you want. So another one that's pretty crunchy at the top. But if I squeeze the bottom... The, the bottom is still plenty moist. So I'm just going to use half a liter. And half a liter is going to be enough to really drain maybe halfway down the pole. Uh, but obviously it also depends on how moist the pole is. If this pole is like really, really dry, then maybe half a liter is not going to get you all the way to, to the halfway mark. Uh, but again, it's mainly the surface area that's currently dry. So this half a liter should actually do. Alrighty, now we've got the smaller moss poles over here. Again, they're so crunchy because the sun was really blazing on them. Now, the inside is still decently moist, but I've got the feeling this is going to get messy. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's a little bit running on this out the side. So what I can do is I can just pour a little bit at the top first and really just get the top to absorb a little bit of moisture. But obviously, just also chuck a bottle upside down, but I'm going to run out of bottles if I keep going like that. And I want this to be quick. I'll give that a second because it's going to, you know, make, make my life a little bit easier. These ones at the bottom over here are pretty much the same as what I did on Saturday. I mean, first of all, I'll need to assess. Yeah, actually, these two are fine. These two need a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll spray the surface first a little bit. And I'm not so worried about mess over here because the plastic backing is going to catch any splashback, or not splashback, any 
splash through. I don't know if that's a word. And now I'm just really going to water from the top. I could also do that with the water bottles like that. It's just that the shelf is kind of in the way. So I'll just do that. And predominantly the bit where the plant is attaching itself to, right? And so this plant, for example, I don't even know why I bother uh, wetting the top. It really is just growing at the bottom. So I just give this a little bit of a top up. But keep in mind also that water evaporating is just going to give the plants a little humidity boost. So it's going to be good for the plants. All right. Oh, I forgot. I have one here as well. Same process over here. I'll just quickly... Obviously, there's way more plants on here and it's uh, a little bit more established. So it has roots all the way. So I don't want the top to dry out. And then I could just pour some water over here as well. Uh, easy. So really also the goal today is to not water that much that I would have to check the pots. Right? So on a Saturday when I do thorough watering, afterwards I check the pots and make sure like if the pot is if the nursery pot is actually sitting inside the planter without any gap, I'll check it to make sure that there is no excess water. I don't want to check today, so I'm rather I'm not watering as much as I would on a Saturday. It's really just to get the plants through till Saturday when I have time to do a thorough watering. Okay. Uh, oh, we kind of got stuck here. So now that they had a little bit of time to absorb water. Uh, and they're not really dry. Is it bone dry? I think it's called bone dry. I always get confused between bone dry and stone dry. And you can see now I can actually just pour water in here so much easier and mess free. There you go. So ideally what I do is every couple of days I would just go in here and maybe put 100 ml or so in here. So then the moss pole will never dry out, but it's also never enough water to actually drown the whole plant um, but I'll just do it as, as as I have time and as I see it as I see it's needed like while I'm pretty organized ultimately really adjusting and just you know is, is probably the key key to success hey, there's no point in following a regimented process like I do exactly that every Wednesday it's like I top up all my plants every Wednesday but what exactly that looks like and which plants and if it's needed and how much that I decide on the day two more over here let's see if we can get this done so this one is pretty dry not so dry at the bottom but dry at the top um, and it has reached almost the top. So obviously I'm more worried about plants that have reached the top of the pole because I don't want this newest node over here that has grown all of these beautiful roots into the pole. I don't want that root system to die because it's drying out fully and then being remoistened too late. Because, well, these, this root system is going to be essential for my next chop and extend. When I do the next chop and extend, I'm going to rely on the top part of the moss pole having enough roots within it to keep this plant alive until it re-establishes itself. So I'm the, the closer the plant gets to the top of the moss pole, the more careful I need to be because those are really the roots I don't want to lose. It's here. Um, but it's also the part of the pole that dries out the quickest. When I went to on holidays in July and I had a house sitter looking after my plants, just before I went on holidays, I actually chopped all of my plants so that none of my plants reached the top of the moss pole. That way, Pretty much that top up, that Wednesday top up, um, was completely removed because every the only thing that can dry out in that first week was also winter, but that the, the only thing that can dry out during the week is really the top part of the moss pole, which I don't care about. It's just an empty moss pole at this stage. Um, the bottom part is going to be kept moist by all of the water that came from the top of the moss pole. So these are some small strategic things that you can do. So if you you know if you don't have that much time to water, then maybe you know don't let your plants reach the top. Anyway, it, it, it's just that sort of level of forward planning and strategic thinking that you will develop over time. And over time, you'll find out that, oh my God, this just actually made my life so much easier. I should totally do that. Or maybe you find out about these things through my YouTube. That would be ideal. So you don't need to make your own lessons. Anyway, same process over here. This plant has reached almost the top of its moss pole. And I want to make sure that these nodes at the top can really grow in here and the roots have a good time. So 
I, you know, that top dries out really quickly. So they definitely need a little bit of a top up halfway through the week. That I believe takes care of all of the moss pulse in here. I just wanted to show you something. I had a bottle on my Pinati Patita and I had a bottle on my Adansonii. The Pinati Patita is already done. That doesn't mean that it was thirsty or that, you know, whatever. It could have literally just been that maybe, maybe I just slightly put the moss pole differently and a little bit of moss was blocking one of the holes or something like that. Right? What that really means is like, I, I, I don't know, sometimes that bottle empties in five minutes, sometimes that bottle empties in one minute, sometimes that bottle empties over 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. As long as the moss can absorb the water faster than it's being released, it's going to be clean. And that's my main incentive. I want it to be clean. I don't care. This is not doing, this is not any work for me. It's just doing it all by itself, right? I can just, unless I really desperately need that bottle back, but I've got 10. So <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, anyway, don't overthink it. You could have a bottle on there and just have really minimal holes in the lid so that it almost releases like over a week almost. I don't know if that's possible. I never tried, but technically why not, right? Like basically micro dosing the water rather than just giving it a thorough watering once a week. I mean, I don't necessarily like the idea of having plastic bottles on top of all of my plants at all times. So I'm happy with that, but don't freak out. Don't, don't, you know, if your bottle has not drained within five minutes, don't freak out. You haven't done anything wrong. You just weren't patient enough. All right, we've done the moss poles. Quick, let's have a look at the Ikea cabinet. I'm not gonna really thoroughly water anything over here. I just wanna spray that top surface of the moss because of the fan and the grow light that dries up pretty quickly. So I'll just, just spray that moss a little bit so it can re-moisten and it's gonna encourage any sort of roots to grow into it. Let's have a look at this. And here. Oh, look at those juicy roots. All right, I'm over it. Alrighty, I promised you an update on this one. So you can see that now that we've given it a little bit more time, that moss has more evenly moistened itself out still looks a little bit dry so I'm still learning how much water this new moss pole can take so I reckon it can easily take two liters so I'm just gonna give it a little bit more and I'll just check on Saturday that's it like I mean it's gonna be fine that water if I give it more time it can only really go south right that water is not gonna rise so over time, if anything, it's just going to drain more and more into it. It's not going to get any drier over time down there. So I'm not too worried about the bottom part. It's definitely going to be some of that two liter is definitely going to make its way down there. But look at this one as well. Look, uh, you can really see that the water has already drained about halfway through. Right? So it's going to do a little bit more draining. And but this part is already fairly moist. So I don't need it to drain all the way, really. <sighs> Okay. All right. So that's it for the living room. We're going to go into the bedroom and see if any of the plants in there need a top up. Just to recap, I gave all of them a thorough watering on Saturday. The bedroom is much smaller. It doesn't have quite as much sunlight exposure as the living area, and it doesn't have as much airflow going through here. Uh, so Usually the humidity in this room stays a little bit more controlled and higher than in any of the uh, in, than in the living area, meaning that technically these poles should be drying out less quickly. Also because they're all nicely conveniently grouped together, they're creating a little bit of a microclimate over here. So I'm not expecting any of those poles to be dry just yet. It's only Wednesday, uh, maybe, but maybe tomorrow or on Friday, they will get a little bit drier, but I'm also being strategic about this. I know that the next thorough watering is going to be on Saturday again. So today I really just want to top up the moss poles, specifically the top of the moss poles to get them through till next Saturday before I do another thorough watering. So if I'd be doing all of this, if it was, if I'd noticed that a pole is maybe slightly dry on a Friday, I would do nothing. But if I noticed that a pole is slightly dry today, well, it has another three days until the next watering. So I would give it a top up. So let's just have a quick look through them. All right. So I, I obviously just, I just squeeze. 
And I can tell that oh, they're all All right, they're all somewhat dry. So I gave them a little squeeze. Uh, let me, let me, I hope you can hear that. So that squeeze to me indicates that the surface has dried out, but it's not fully dry, right? I mean, if you're looking at it from a, from a visual perspective, you can only judge it by the surface uh, of the moss paw. But ultimately, I want to make sure that the moss pole is thoroughly moist. And so I know that the inside of the moss pole is still moist, while the outside will obviously dry out first. So it's not necessarily urgent for me to water. I could totally do it tomorrow, the day after. But as I mentioned before, I want to get it just through till next Saturday. So to me, it makes more sense to just top them up a little bit today. Also, something that I mentioned earlier, also... So, and sorry for the repeats, but because I'm filming this across two episodes, I want to make sure I mention everything um, a couple of times in case you haven't watched the other part. Dry moss is hydrophobic. Hi, Brad. Hi, baby. It's almost dinner time. Yes, soon. Dry moss is hydrophobic. So if I let the moss pole dry out fully, yes, yes. Dry moss is hydrophobic, so if I let that moss pole dry out fully, I'm going to have a much harder time re-wetting it on Saturday or making it moist again. Also, if I let it dry out more and then I just want to give it a little top up, that top up is just going to get really messy. So, so today is the perfect day to do it. The moss pole is still moist on the inside, so if I now give it a watering, the moss can just easily absorb that. But it's dry enough for me to not risk like over watering or anything like that. It will just be enough to get it through till Saturday. Anyway, enough explanation, let's actually do it. So there's two ways of me doing this. Uh, I could just use my water bottles again. Of course, I could flip them upside down. They won't take a full liter. So I could fill all of my bottles with just half a liter or so and just um, pop it upside down. I, exactly. I could use my trusted sprayer over here, but the sprayer can also get a little bit messy. So I only do it when I just need to spray a little bit and I'm just being really careful with it. But technically, I should be able to just pour it over the moss pole without creating too much of a mess because the moss isn't fully dry yet. So let's give that a try. And of course, the top of the moss pole will always dry out first. Uh, my goal is really to just give these poles enough water so that the top of the moss pole is moist again but not enough water that it drains all the way through to the bottom of the moss pole because frankly, the bottom of the moss pole does not require any watering right now. Alrighty, so I spread about one liter across three moss poles rather than a full liter per moss pole that I usually do on a Saturday. Of course, the amount of water I provide them with also really depends on the size of the plant. These two plants are on the same type of moss pole, but you can't tell me that this plant would need as much water as this one. Right? Or if this one is unfurling a new leaf, a new leaf unfurling usually needs a lot of water. So then I might actually give it a full liter. But I just always judge it by the moss pole. And I just squeeze it and see if it needs it. Actually, this one can take a full one. So I'll just pop a full one on here. It's just because these leaves are so large. And then the third option of watering would be the spray bottle. And with that, I really just go close to the part of the pole that the plant has attached to and I just spray it. But that obviously gets messy. Alrighty, I'll just time lapse the rest because this is really just repeating the same steps I did before. All right, I think that was enough. All right, thank you so much for watching and thank you for coming along and watering my plants with me. You guys were a great help. <laughs> anyway, I really hope that um, you learned something from this video and maybe you can take a few tips and tricks and incorporate into your own watering routine. If you want to learn more about the plants in themselves that I have over here, please check out my full house plant tour, which I'll link over here. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next time. Bye.